So like here, you might be freaking out if you're looking at this because with different weighted yarn, it actually looks like it's two rows longer. But don't panic if it's too short or it's too long. It's gonna be okay whichever one it ends up being because I made it a separate step to go in and do um, the handles that end up holding your um, lunchbox up. So if it's shorter, the handles would be fine. If it's longer, you can even make the handles longer or shorter you know, to what you want it to be. But don't feel like it has to perfectly line up here um, because it's gonna, like if this were shorter down here, well, you're gonna add in a handle and you're not even gonna be able to tell. I mean, this could have been down to here and you wouldn't even notice because of this. So just pointing that out, different yarns will make things look differently and it's okay. So once again, that's okay because we're gonna have the handles come through and you won't even be able to tell. So I got that there and I'm gonna do the same thing um, on this side, just turning. Use any pins you already have in there, just reuse them. I do this with hand sewing. I just don't think the machine, you know, I don't have the world's nicest sewing machine and I'm sick of killing my machines every year. So I'm just learning to do things by hand that I know kill the machine. So that, that's my little growth. <laughs> sick of replacing with yet another bad machine. I would like to save up for something nice like a Bernina. Like that. A Foff embroidery machine. Those things are nice looking. If I'm saying that right, the awesome looking German sewing machine. Okay, so that is the front. And you can see it's it's already starting to kind of hold that shape, even without the back panel. Now we're gonna go, and oh, this is a good angle to look. See how nice and wipeable that's going to be when they spill their salad dressings and peanut butter and whatever else spills in there. So now we're gonna do same process. We're gonna take that back panel and we're gonna fold it in half. You can see this is not an exact science. We just wanna make sure that things are lining up. So this is, I can see where this is um, the sides. I'm gonna fold that in half. This is our middle, catching on our shirt. Okay, that wasn't part of the plan, but it happened anyway. And just everywhere you can, reusing pens that are already in there. This is a good point to just feel. I'm feeling both sides to make sure I have this lined up, not only with the center, but with the side that I already did. So that looks good to me. Stealing this pen in here. Everything, you wanna make sure that the crochet lines up and that you still can see um, both layers of vinyl as you're going through there, so that and we're taking our turn here's a pin we're going to use so pinch to the corner and then turn We're gonna double check everything and make sure it's really just hanging nicely before we sew. Okay, so that all is looking good. Now before you start sewing this, we've got one more thing to do, and that is to take the tops of all these pieces, and we're just gonna turn them under a little. Now I'm gonna turn under a little more on this one. And that is just so there's a nice looking edge there. The crochet edge looks darling just as it is because, well, it just looks nice. So turn that under, you can pin it as well. Um, you might have to like open it up, like here it's in this corner. So I'm gonna let this pin out for a second and I'm gonna push that down a little. And the same thing on the back panel that slides over. I'm gonna fold that under a little bit here. So from the point where it stops connecting on the sides, it's gonna be rolled under. And this is just an eyeballing thing. It's not a precise measurement. You're not even gonna really see it. 
It's just so it makes me happy. You may not, you may have chosen not to even put the vinyl in here, so you may be thinking, man, that was a big waste of time. Was it really necessary to be water resistant? Probably not, but my kids requested it. Okay, so same thing here and here. I'll come back in just a second. Get a thread that is pretty darn close. I wouldn't go buy anything special, but something that's close enough to either the side or the front. I'm going with the front because it's the dead on thing that we're staring at. And um, just you're going to work your way down. Make sure it catches in something. Now, things like this. See how the white is poking out there? That's where you're going to go in as you're sewing because you really only knew where it was going to line up at this point. I'm going to take this pen out for a second and I'm just going to be very careful not to cut my crochet and I'm going to do a very faint trim because you don't want to see that fluffy white whatever is poking out because it's not pretty. And once you're certain that's out of the way, then we're going to stitch. I want to make sure that I go through the vinyl and the yarn, which is why it would be good to do two, maybe even three rows, because then you could go through the vinyl and then do closer to the edges. But it's basically just going back and forth. So I suggest you just go down the vinyl and then do a, a second or a third row closer to the edge. But if you don't make sure you get in that vinyl, it's not going to be secure. So anyway, I'm not going to make you watch me hand sew, but just I'm about a fourth of an inch from the edge, wherever you've cut your vinyl down to. But if I were you, when you're done going all the way around, I would suggest that you go like right up next to the edge with your thread as well. And I'll show you what that looks like when that's done. Oh, also you're going to go in and um, just go back and forth, almost like a hand zigzag in and out um, around where you've folded over the vinyl. If you go too close in the vinyl, it's just going to get rid of the integrity or the strength of the vinyl and it's just going to crack. Remember, the stuff's not very strong, so I would put like a stitch here and then one here and then back on the yarn and just keep it spaced apart. Right, I'm going to take my black yarn again and I'm going to be working on the straps on the side and once again I did not do a perfect job lining up my two sides. You can see this one's longer than that one but it's all going to look fine in the end. I just don't care enough to rip anything out that I've stitched by hand. It's too much work. Pick one side. This is the top of the box here. So pick the right side or you could do the same thing. It doesn't really matter which side you grab. You're just going to start on the right side. I'm going to go in, we're going to connect the yarn on, let's make a loop, put the hook in there so it doesn't get too tight to the project, and knot it off, and I'm going to go ahead and open up this thread so I can hide my thread as I'm working across. Chain one, and we're going to do um, five, so start here, hide the thread as we go across, five single crochet across, so one, two, three, four, five. Didn't quite get it all hit. I'm going to leave that there. And then I'm going to chain one and turn. And we're actually going to do 32 total rows. So only five across, chain one, turn and do five more. I'm going to hide that thread in there. So five rows, sorry, 32 rows of that five single crochet across. And